today we're going to be doing our power rankings going into week three of the NFL. As you see, we have five categories here. We're going to go through every team and debate whether we're going to move them up or down. Dobbs, let's start it off right now. We have the Baltimore Ravens. Are we keeping them in Super Bowl contenders or are we moving them down to playoffs? I'm going to propose something even more critical and dire here. No, don't do it. You're, you're, you're right. We're not going to do it yet. Let's just say this. If they start out 0-3, Ravens fans, and the Ravens fans would agree. If they start 0-3, we're going to have a lot of problems. Okay. I, I am massively concerned about this team's O-line. I am massively concerned. I, Let I me think say this. Agree alike. I think we have to move them down to playoffs. Because I'm thinking about it. When have the Ravens went to the Super Bowl? When is the last time they went to the Bowl? Well, yeah, it's, when is know, the shout, last... out to Joe, shout out to Joe Flacco. But yeah, to your point here in this, in this, in this modern era of the Ravens. That's what I'm saying. Why are they in Super Bowl contender? They're 0 2 and they haven't been to a bowl in how many years? I think right. we have to, we're being, we, again, this, this is subject to change next week, Hunter. If they start 0 3, we got, they got a lot of questions to have answered. But for so right moving now, them to playoffs? Oh, they're going down to playoffs. And, oh, and I don't think Ravens no. fans are going to sit here and dispute it. I think, I think Ravens fans are on the same page as I've seen how that O line is playing this year. Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah, we're definitely on the same page about the Bengals. I think, I think. Look, we, but let it be clear. Look, <laughs> We are aware that the Bengals start every year really, really badly. But something about this year is not only feels different, we know something is different, right? We've touched on the fact that Joe Burrow is essentially dealing with what is the start of arthritis in his wrist, which is terrible. And we, nobody wants to hear that. And we don't want that to be the case. But as for what we know and has been reported, is the case. We know that Jamar Chase is acting like a diva. You know, I hate to use the word hunter, but it's a diva situation <laughs> over there right now. And diva situations have impacts on the locker room, right? Especially when everybody else is grown man in there. And, and not that Jamar Chase isn't a grown man, but we're all we're all grown grown men on a mission. And when you're the one that's kind of maybe per se do you, halting the uh halting the objective of the mission. Would or, you or, argue or, though that I get what you're saying about like kind of the dysfunction and the weirdness of the team. But would you argue that they played the Chiefs close enough where it's kind of like they still look like they can be competitive like that. Like, I, I want to move them down, but I also don't. Like, I don't know. Like, they're 0-2, but we've seen them come back from this. Like, we haven't seen the Ravens, like, bounce back from an 0-2 start. I'm with you on that. Okay, you know what? You're right. Let's I don't leave want to jump them. the gun. If they're 0-3... They, they, they are just know. like how the Patriots used to be, and, and, and the Patriots never fooled me. But... Again, like I said, some does feel different this year, but you know what, Hunter? I am with you. One, one more Bengals week. fans, we're going to give you the benefit of the doubt, and and we know they they have they've done this to us before, so we're not going to fall victim to it yet. But one more week, very similar to the Ravens, even though it's not same same tear dropping. Look, you're both dropping if you lose next week. That let it be clear. Lions, I think we got to keep them there. Is there really any discussion? Yeah, no. Again, I, look, the only discussion is if Jared Goff keeps playing the way he's playing, we are going to all of a sudden have massive concerns. But you know, Jared Goff could still turn around. It could have just been right. It could just be an overreaction because that's what the video was. So let's not <laughs> overreact in the power rankings that we'll leave them where they are, but subject to change potentially. Texans, same thing. I don't think they're moving. Yeah, no. CJ Stroud is, and again, nobody's talking, nobody's really talking about it, but like, look, the Bears defense is incredible. And CJ Stroud, Played albeit great. that they didn't score a lot of points, the way that CJ moves in that pocket, the way CJ's playing quarterback, I mean, CJ is quarterbacking, like really quarterbacking in a league where really quarterbacking is kind of slowly dying. Yeah. Right. CJ Stroud is, is quite a quarterback. The Texans are going to be in that tier. As long as CJ Stroud is there and D'Amico Ryans are there, let it like, let it just be actually like just shut out loud. Like CJ and CJ and D'Amico, this team is a Super Bowl contender and they've shown that. All right. Uh, Kansas City Chiefs, not a question. Yeah, uh, we're not going to discuss that. Uh, Philadelphia Eagles. I thought I was thinking about it. I was I don't thinking think, about it. You know, I don't, I don't know if we want to. Not, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. The Eagles fans, you know, it, it, it's it's uh, it's on the radar. You're on the radar to be moved down, and and I don't think that, that they would disagree with that either. No, uh, 49ers, they got to stay. Even though they got to stay, but let it be clear. Let it be clear. Teams. The injury situation is really, really it's bad. Rough. But I feel like that that's also why that we have to to clarify to the listeners. That's maybe perhaps why we can't move them down because it, 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 again, we can't. If they're healthy, we know how they'll be at the end of the year. Like yeah, as long as the Niners are kind of like as long as they make the playoffs. They're going to be ready to throw haymakers, and that's kind of the, been the reality. That will be the reality, and it's going to be this year pretty much the whole year. Buffalo Bills, we're in the playoff tier already. I, 
I I feel like okay, I felt the same way. Buffalo Bills are up. I think I think the trend is up with them. No, absolutely. Sean McDermott has a, we already knew, but Sean McDermott sat here and said, you know, I heard some of the allegations a couple years ago. No, 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 no. Which I, ones? I leave, I lead this team. You hand up. Look, we were, I was sitting here a little worried about Sean McDermott, but Sean McDermott said, no, loud and clear. I hear you guys. You know what? I'm going to make it crystal clear that not only can I lead this team, but I have the utmost faith in Josh Allen. I have the utmost faith in the way that we've built and drafted for this roster. And not only that, but we add and pepper in the perfect free agent signings. For right now, yeah, that's that's what you can say about uh, the Bills, and that is what it is. And also, even some waiver wire claims that have completely changed the fabric of this team. Shout out to the Bills. Shout out to Brandon being over there in Buffalo. We have the Chicago Bears. I feel like I don't know. I'm debating moving them to middle of the pack. Oh yeah, no, we're definitely moving the middle of the pack for right now because here's the, here's the, what I'm going to say, Hunter. Until that that O line can show it's us a, be, yeah. a semblance of organization, and this is why they're middle of the pack. It actually goes perfectly in hand because they have one of the best defenses in the entire league, and that is objective. If you want to sit here and be a Bears hater, you can be a Bears hater, but you better at least acknowledge that the Bears have a hell of a defense. Hate but as then much as the you offense, want on the offense, yeah. Yeah, I'll say it. if we're going to the offense, look, the offense has major problems. But not only that, it's not Caleb's fault. Let it be clear. A lot of you guys got baited by the title of that video. Thanks for making it loud and clear that you didn't sit there and watch the entire video about the <laughs> Caleb Williams bus. Thanks for making it clear that you guys didn't sit and watch more than 30 seconds. Some of your guys' comments, you know, you exposed yourself. You exposed yourself. But yeah, it's not on Caleb, but the Bears offense, we know that it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's black and white, Hunter. It's black and white. And when you're black and white, you got to be in the middle of the pack. It's only right. Middle of the pack, and I kind of had a discussion with one of the commenters last week, is like kind of like seventh seed, sixth seed maybe, like teams that could make a wild card appearance like at the end of the, the seeding. The Miami Dolphins. <sighs> Dude, I <laughs> think they got to go down. They, oh, they, oh, no, Dolphins fans agree. They have to go down, not only because we don't know how long Tua is going to be out. Even when Tua's been out there this year, they, um, I mean, they haven't looked very good. I mean, just call it for what it is, right? I mean, Jalen Ramsey's had a humongous regression, and it kind of already started last year. It's continuing yeah, into this year. just extended him. I, know, I, I was one of the first people saying I was I so know. confused by that. I, you know... You know, Stephen Ross, he's made a lot of questionable decisions, and now he's out here selling his part. I don't know if you saw that, but he's out here auctioning off his his uh, a big chunk of, of what he owns of them. Yeah, I think Stephen Ross took a long look in the mirror a couple days ago and said, yeah, I might have to go put a clown nose on for some of these decisions. <laughs> and let it be clear, none of this has anything to do with Tua. God bless Tua. I hope Tua figures it out and not only recovers, but makes the best decision for himself. But the bottom line is here, Hunter, and every Dolphins fan agrees. Right now, we really don't know how to feel about this team. There's a lot of questions. There's a lot of questions in place for even, and I hate to say it, but as of right now, Mike McDaniel really does have a lot of a lot to prove this year. Not, not only to Dolphins fans, but to the national media. There's a lot of pressure on that man's shoulders, and we'll see if he can deliver. New York Jets. <laughs> I'm not look again, like like Aaron Rodgers said, I'm not going to get giddy and make and jump off the wagon yet. I'm not. But just like plenty of other teams we've already reviewed they're they are on the radar where if there's a couple more weeks, if not just one more week. And as a matter of fact, forget that, Hunter. We get to find out tonight. And, and yeah, this will be posted tomorrow where we would already found out. So don't 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 leave some snide comment thinking that. Yeah, we recorded this on Thursday. Let it be clear. We have to we don't for the game. Yet. We don't know. But. The Jets don't look good tonight they or they look lose good, tonight. Dude. Just know that we made the wrong decision. Let that be clear. But hopefully they win tonight. And if they do, then we made the right decision. But I, uh, we haven't filled out our game picks yet. Um, but I was leaning heavily going Patriots. It was kind of scary. It is scary, isn't it? It's, a, it's a scary that we've been considering. Green, and that's no disrespect to the Patriots. It's just we're concerned about the Jets. Green Bay Packers. I think they've proven, look, yeah, no, Packers are, and, and you know Super what, Bowl. even, Super I think Bowl. the Pow's going to say, well, I, they're going, they're going back up because Matt LaFleur has shown that that's, the, and that's, that's the bottom line. Matt LaFleur is the, uh, Matt LaFleur is the cog of this team. Jordan Love is the gear that moves the cog. I, maybe I'm vice versa. I don't know anything about machines, guys. I'm, I'm machine. I'm, I'm inept with the machines. You fill in the blank for me here, mechanical guys. Jordan Love and, 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 and LaFleur, they, they, they make the machine function. But Matt LaFleur has shown that as long as he's there, you know what? They're competitive. They're ready to go. And not only that, they've drafted perfectly well. They 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 fill in the blanks in free agency. The Packers got to go back up to Super Bowl contender. Los Angeles Rams. They got to go to the middle of the pack to me, dude. 
after the way they oh, lost we're being generous rival, after the and with all the each. injuries Right now we're being generous, I think, Hunter. And, and again, the Rams fans, let it be clear, it's because we have faith in Sean McVay, it's because we have faith in Stafford. But if that wasn't the case, the Rams would be uh, in, a, in a lower tier. But that, oh, I think yeah. that's kind of bottom line. Atlanta Falcons. I feel like they kind of got to stay. I feel wait, like- wait, wait, hold on, wait. What about, uh, wait, uh, would it, are we, wait, real quick. Just, what about the Cowboys, Saints, Bucks? Oh, dude. My bad. I don't know why I just skipped. I, I think I moved the Rams down and capped. Okay. okay yeah, no, they, dude, we'll just cut that part out. We'll cut that no, part no, out. No, like, no, we can keep like it in. The... We can keep it in. It's fine. <laughs> I don't no. want to skip on the, 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 no. you know, the you audience. Skip on, on the, the, you know, the NFC All South right. and, the, and the Cowboys over here. The Dallas Cowboys. Are we keeping them? What are we doing? Do we keep them in the playoffs? Like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to say this, and, and, and this is not to gas my squad. This is, I think, because this is somehow we have to look at it. You know, we don't know yet, and, and the Saints really might be a lot better than a lot of people think. So I think we're, where I'm going to look at it, I'm going to say, like, right, the Cowboys kind of have shown us to, and, and to what we said about even in the last video, right, about with the Cardinals and how the Cowboys, even last year, and the Cardinals were a completely different team. Sometimes the Cowboys just show up, right, like, you know my thing about flatter than that back than that back patio sprite. Like, they show up like, you know, the, the barbecue sprite that's been left out overnight. Sometimes, uh, uh, this is just for whatever reason, especially in the Mike McCarthy tenure, that is just sometimes the tendency the Cowboys happen to have. Now, is it really concerning that it was at home versus the fact that it hasn't happened at home in quite literally a few years? Yeah, it is concerning. But I think the Cowboys still have a relatively not even solid. They have a relatively good roster and I still have plenty of faith that Dak is going to be the leader that that team needs. So I'm not ready to jump ship yet or even move them down yet, but just like a lot of other teams, Hunter, they are on watch. That is probably Frog to say watch, it as nicely yeah. as possible. I think, I think we keep them there. New Orleans saints. Dare I say super bowl contenders with the way that they have played two weeks in. It's hard not to, to think if they keep this up, why would they not be? No, and you know what? I'm going to say this too, Hunter. You know, a lot of national medias, I feel like they're, they're, they're a little bullish right now. You know, they're not ready. But I think it would be disrespectful of us. And this has nothing to do with the fact that they're my teammate. Far from it. In fact, I actually am scared to do this because I, you know me, I don't yeah. like to. I don't like to get ahead. That's how I feel but, about the Bears. Yeah. But there's a point where you got to say to yourself, none of that actually matters in the way that the team operates is the way the team operates. And, and I, I have faith in the way the team is operating. I have plenty of faith in Dennis Allen's defense. We always knew that. Well, then you tie it to Clint Kubiak's offense. I mean, all of the sudden, I think it's only fair that as of right now, and again, this list is fluid, but and can be fluid, but the Saints for right now, I think we got to move them up. I'm going to say something so cursed. Derek Carr, Super Bowl MVP. But if you, but if what, but what if you spoke into existence for it? What if you spoke into existence crazy. and then I, and then I got to go buy you a new car or something, Hunter? You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe you just spoke into existence for the squad. Car's car. Tampa Car, Bay Buccaneers. Hold on, write it down. Wait, wait. We got to throw it out there. Wait, hold on. Wait, it's, it's out there. <laughs> Tampa Bay Buccaneers. <laughs> Dude, I don't know. We can't. No, no. Here's what I still will say. I, while the offense is operating incredibly efficiently in the pass game, their run game stinks, and their defense yeah. is just about average. So I think if they're able to fix a couple of things, then maybe they get moved up, but I think we have to keep them in playoffs. Well, no, and again, it's not like they're like blowing teams out. Yeah, th- look, they, look for what we for what we expected. It, it, you know, the Bucks are above average. We expect them. We still expect them to be a playoff team. You know, let it be clear. Like I think we both had them as like our last seed in the playoffs in our in our playoff predictions. But with all that said, you know, the Bucks are still fighting, clawing in these games against against good teams. And so let it be clear. It's not you know, and that's why they're a playoff team, right? You win games if you win games, you're, you're a playoff team. If you're dominating games and you show that you can dominate consistently, that's when you kind of can move up to that Super Bowl tier. Or or if you're not doing that this year, you at least have shown you can do it previously and within the last couple of seasons. And we know the pedigree of your team. That kind of is what makes Super Bowl champion tier teams. But with that said, Hunter, the Bucks very, very possibly can make that move yeah. in the next week or two. And that I'm we'll just leave it at that for Bucks fans. Don't Bucks fans, don't feel left out. You know, you might be able to join the party super soon. Atlanta Falcons moving into the middle of the pack tier. I think they kind of have to stay right now. No, right now, right now, I do think they have to stay, but very encouraging last week. Very encouraging. And you stack another week or two like that on top of what you just did. It's only a matter of time before the Falcons move up to the playoffs like we expected from Atlanta. So they're either going to match what we expected or they're going to either just stay here for the rest of the season and just kind of go week to week or because or, I don't I don't really think the Falcons would be a team that moves down. I, I really just don't. I mean, they really do kind of just have too much too many assets in, in the right areas from yeah. my perspective. But 
yeah, they're, they're fluid, likely trending positively here, but it's, you know, it's possible they stagnate. We're going to have to keep an eye, eye on the Falcons here. Indianapolis Colts. I'm kind of of the mindset to move them down. I think oh, no, unfortunately. I think, are they an any given Sunday team? As of right now, they have to be any given Sunday. Oh, I'm, no. Because, and this is the thing too, you know, people want to bring this up and, and I want to be clear. I'm, I'm aware of Colts fans. I'm aware of the drops the receivers are making and stuff. But with that being said, and the drops this team is making, I think what we have to talk about is this. Excuse me. The problem with this team is that, look, it's not just the, yeah, the drops, all whatever, whatever. But Anthony Richardson, despite all that, is playing very inconsistent football. Like if we're talking footwork, if we're talking finding the right guy on the right play. He's essentially look, right a now, rookie, but it still affects the team. No, oh, exactly. I was going to say, it's not like there's not plenty of room to grow. And it's not like I'm saying Anthony Richardson is a bust. I'm not saying anything even close to that. What I'm saying is this year specifically, I don't know if perhaps maybe the, you could say the experience last year of Gardner Minshew was kind of a catalyst of being able to be the team that they were right. And, and, and perhaps that that lack of experience this year might be what is going to be the detriment of this season. I'll just leave it at that for right now. And I don't think Colts fans are going to be freaking out at that. I think that they would agree relative to the situation. Chargers are going to the playoffs. They're getting up. They're getting moved up. Oh, th- th- and you know, and let it be clear, Chargers fans, we're talking about a team that might be able to jump from middle of the pack to Super Bowl tier by the end of the year. That culture that Jim Harbaugh is building over there, that not that defense playing hats on fire. <laughs> did, you, did you see when they lined up seven on the offensive line? They had they had two tight ends on either side. It was just like Jim Harbaugh football. To the max, it was. Crazy. Go figure, Hunter. That when everybody's playing two safeties, twenty yards off the line of scrimmage, and you got corners that are way outside the number. You, you don't call me crazy, Hunter. Go figure that it's time to just pound the rock. And well, Jim the Harbaugh, passing, Galaxy passing Brain is down. Passing Jim is Harbaugh, very Galaxy down. Brain. Just time to just hand the ball off and let. And shout out to J.K. Dobbins, man. Shout out to J.K. Dobbins. What a story. We'll leave it at that for now. But you, Chargers fans, you got to be ecstatic, yeah, literally and figuratively. Pittsburgh Steelers got to move them up to the playoffs, man. Got to do it. That defense how, is electric. How do we, you know, Hunter, how did we sell Mike Tomlin like this? We, we, we're never making Steelers, whenever Steelers fans just forget it. Whenever making it's mistakes. every, because every year is going to be the year that he goes under 500. And I always, <laughs> I always fall for it. I always yeah. do. Steelers fans, we're done. We're done. We let it be clear. You, you know what? If we're talking about some hate. comments that were spot on, you know, Steelers fans, you guys were always ahead of the game yeah, on us. Yeah. Whenever, you're, whenever you're gonna a, make a mistake on Mike Tomlin ever again. That's whenever, my thing is like, that's the best thing is like, you're allowed to like, I don't want to encourage hate comments, but it's just like, shit, if you're right, I'd rather be wrong and learn from it than, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, absolutely. Just don't believe a hate comment after watching 20 seconds of the video and then, and then coming to realize that you missed the entire point of the video. Uh, (laughs) Cough, cough, a lot of the Caleb Williams comments. Uh, Anyways, (laughs) Seattle Seahawks. feel like they got to be playoff team at this point. Oh, the Seahawks are playing a fantastic ball, but Geno Smith is playing fantastic ball. Gino, the Hunter, the footwork is back. He's qu- he quickly reading the field is back. Shane Waldron, war criminal? Is he this year's stop, war? Stop, stop, stop. Shane Waldron is this year's war early candidate to take Pete Carmichael's trophy because Pete Carmichael's not taking it this year. That's that's so, what we have to do. Offensive war criminal award. Yeah, well, we know. Look, it wasn't official, but Pete Carmichael was the unofficial one last year. It's going to be official at the end of this year. Shane Waldron's looking like the prime candidate. We're only two weeks in, but yeah, uh, uh, Gino's back. And yeah, we, we're, me and Hunter are aware the Seahawks haven't played the the, the biggest, uh, let's just say the... the but right, you good, are what your record says. A good group of competition so far, but yeah, you are what your record says. And you know what? All that, the Seahawks defense is firing on all cylinders. That's objectively a fact. Tennessee Titans. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. I don't, yeah. I think let's just leave it at this Titans. It's, here's my your head thing. coach and your quarterback don't have any relationship. And it's very clear. And that's just the least of the problems. Their defense is one of the best defenses in the NFL. No. Yeah. It, but will like Levis that. is the white Jameis Winston. I don't know if we could have said it better ourselves. I mean, that's, know, that, that's just reality. Talk Asian Jameis Winston is definitely will Levis. And, and also <laughs> let it be. Let, I just want to throw this out there. Cause this is actually something that definitely needs to be discussed where, you know, it's not really being talked about because the Titans have so many bigger problems. It doesn't have to be, but we saw that money. The Titans just gave Legereus Sneed. Uh, let me just fact check myself here, Hunter. Cause I don't want to be wrong. Cause I did check it two days ago where things change very, not, not like all the time, but give me one second here. Let me stall for one second. Hold on a minute guys. But I know it's cause let me say, let me, let preface. me guess I know it was really pretty bad. Oh, Legereus Sneed, 97 out of 98 corners with a 37.8 grade via, via PFF. And, uh, yeah, we saw the money they just gave him, so we'll just let that simmer for a little bit. The Cleveland Browns. 
I feel like they got to stay middle of the pack. I don't. They haven't like moved me. Yeah, but with that being said, I think if they like the defense can keep doing what it's doing, if Deshaun can can keep improving, because I will say, like last week was major improvement from week one. It certainly was, but the O line still has a lot of jumps to make. I think Nick Chubb coming back. If Nick Chubb can be the superhuman that we know he is and come back somehow, even even three fourths of what he used to be. This team, I do still think we'll make that push towards that playoff tier sooner than later. But for right now, we're not going to jump the gun in terms of moving them up. I think that they're still middle of the pack right now. Jacksonville Jaguars. This might be the hardest one of any team yet so far. I like don't want to move them down. But like, I feel like Doug Peterson and Trevor Lawrence are on so many different pages. And the fact that they're 0-2 is kind of ridiculous with the talent that they have. Six most expensive offensive line, and they're w- not doing shit. And I think, well, yeah, and we were, again, you know, credit to us, we were ahead of the game. Wait, again, like we were talking about the Giants O-line and then a separate video, how Giants fans were so, like, certain that they were making the right decisions. We were uh, six months ahead of the fact that this O-line wasn't going to be moving the needle. Not only that, but they were putting the money in the wrong areas. But with all that being said, I also want to say, Hunter, I'm not even sure, they're not on the same page. I don't think they're on the same book. They might not even be reading the same genre. So, yeah, I don't, for right now. Move them down, yeah. But right now, we got to move them down to any given Sunday, which is a travesty, a travesty in Jacksonville. Because, you know, again, me and Hunter were the number one seed truthers last year. So we're not haters in the slightest. This pains us to do. Let it be known, Jacksonville Jaguars fans. Arizona Cardinals. I want to do it. I think I want to do it. I mean, like, what they did versus the Rams last week, like, that just looked like a team that was ready to ball. It wasn't even like a... Oh, damn. Wow. Like the Rams look like shit. Like the Cardinals look like a good football team. And I think no, when Kyler Murray looks elite. Yeah. How, yeah. And you, know what, you know what, Hunter? When you got an elite quarterback, you, you're always possible. in the playoff tier. And if Kyler Murray can continue to play elite, bump him up. Bump him up. We're for it. All right. Last team of the middle of the pack the Minnesota Vikings. Dude, what the fuck is Sam Darnold smoking? You know what it is, Hunter? No, it's that you know, KOC pack. That's what it is. Oh, he's smoking. Oh, he's oh he's cheap. Oh, he's rolling up grams of KOC pack. But more than more than <laughs> more than that, more than just that, I think this is something we have to acknowledge. Look, let's let's let jokes aside, funny stuff aside. This is something I really want to touch on because this is real stuff, and this is something that really needs to be discussed. You've known my tangent for years, Hunter. You've known my tangent that I say, look, doesn't matter how talented a guy is, especially when they were as raw as Sam Darnold is, right? But when you bring a guy in, especially from, from th- that isn't playing SEC ball, it's, it's a whole, even, even coming from the SEC, it's different. When you bring a guy in from a conference that's not the best in college football, and you just expect that you're going to just drop him in, and you're going to say, yeah, you're going to be, he's going to be able to go out there with grown men and be able to ball out, and that's going to be exactly what he is, despite the fact that he has so much room to grow, just the footwork, the accuracy, reading the field. No, he's just going to figure it all, all from year one, and none of his confidence will be affected by the fact that he's going to suck. And, and right, all these little things that are completely not true and we know to be not true. Now, I think Sam Darnold's one of the perfect case studies where you finally realize, like, well, you give him time, you let him learn behind the right guys that are not going to rush him. They're going to slowly get the right habits into his mind. You know, go figure that you're going to see big jumps and you're going to actually see him playing like the professional that you expected. Vikings are a perfect case study of that. Hashtag stop starting rookie quarterbacks. Yeah, I think that's I think that's probably where we're going to move to. Any given Sunday, we have the Denver Broncos. I think we know what we have to do with them, unfortunately. They have to they're getting shunned to the basement with the Panthers and the Giants. Yeah, you know the meme where the the I don't know their names because I'm not I'm not I've never I've never been in I'm not big in the slightest into WWE, but you know that meme people always use where the guy with the long hair is, is Undertaker. He's 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 like whispering him to him. He's telling me sorry. He he loves him, but he has to go kick his ass, and then he he like flings off the rope and kicks him in the face. Oh, Sean Michaels, Sean Michaels, Shawn Michaels. That that's me right now Sweet to the Broncos. Music, yeah. That's me. That's me to Sean Payton and the Broncos right now. Like Sean, I'm really sorry, but we got to bump you down there to the basement here with a roundhouse kick. Yeah, it is Sean Michaels. Yeah, yeah. So this, yeah, Sean Michaels meme applied. Yeah, I'm sorry, Sean. We Sean Sean Michaels to Sean Payton. We got to get you. We got to get a round, roundhouse kick into the basement here. <laughs> Las Vegas Raiders. I think we're moving them up to middle of the pack here, Hunter. Thank. I think. I, I, I mean, think, after the beat the Raiders or after to beat the Ravens, yeah. Look, I think that they've shown. Look, number one, okay this that. team has an identity, right? I think. I think I'm going to say like like this: if you have an identity and you, we know what to expect from you week to week. 
that kind of almost that's kind of what dictates you to be middle of the pack as long as the identity results in being able to win football games, which it does for the Raiders because the identity is that this defense is going to show up hats on fire, ready to throw their helmet into the, the other team into the ball every single snap for their team. They're ready to force turnovers. They're ready to hit you hard. They're they're playing the right spots. I mean, look, and and with that said, the Raiders offense volatile as it is. We saw what Gardner Minshew can do last year. I think we'd be kind of foolish to not move him up to the middle of the pack here. So uh, that's how I'm going to lay it out. Let me ask this. After two games of the NFL, who was the war criminal? Luke Getze or Justin Fields? Because they're both, they're both not bad right now. I just feel like maybe they didn't fit each other. Maybe neither of them are war criminals. Yeah, no, maybe. And also, maybe, you know what? Maybe both of them really put the work in this offseason to figure it out. Meanwhile... You know, again, we won't even get into it, but so, so other people didn't where they needed to, and we'll just leave it at that. The Washington Commanders. I feel like they have to stay here right now. Yeah, I was going to say, the Commanders are one of those teams, but respectfully, the, this is exactly what we expected. We didn't, nobody besides maybe really hopeful Commanders fans expected the Commanders to probably fluctuate from this tier at all this year. That's totally understandable. That's totally fine. And if you're a Commanders fan... It, you probably want to stay in this tier. We know that this team has still a lot of growth to do. You still have a lot of assets you're going to have to add through the draft, but you feel very confident that Jaden Daniels is the guy, which is already amazing. You're already seeing what you want to see from Jaden Daniels and from an arm talent perspective. Yeah, we need work. We need to work how to manipulate that pocket. We do want to see that pocket presence improve, but it's not the end of the world when you can run 22 miles an hour like Jaden Daniels can. So with that being said, yeah, Commanders fans, you got to be happy with what you're seeing, despite the fact that, right, we know it's not going to be this year, but you have a direction. They're throwing behind the line of scrimmage, I want to say, 37% of the time, which is the league average is 11, which is kind of insane. That is absolutely insane. But irregardless, you know, we, we're still seeing, you're seeing the stuff you want to see from Jaden Daniels, and, and you're, you're at least feeling comfortable that, yeah, you know what? We did make the right pick. New England Patriots. They have to move up. They have to be the middle of the pack. No, they have to. They look, Patriots have made two tier jumps in two Dude, weeks. That's what I would say, our biggest mover. The Patriots are the biggest mover. Look. Gerard Mayo. What the fuck Mayo, is he man. cooking in New England? He's I guess he's cooking jokes. You saw that NFL films thing where he hit yeah. this where he hit the same joke three times on the on the on the players funny and the staff. Guy. What a guy. what a funny guy. What a what you just <laughs> vibes are loose in New England and, and maybe what that's the what the fuck is going on there. Is that what the young bucks needed, Hunter? Maybe that's that's the, 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 the disconnect, you know, is is you know, a lot of the I don't know. We're moving in a weird direction in the league. Maybe Gerard Mayo is just the breath of fresh air that they needed in New England. They just needed a little bit of jokes and laughter i don't know call it call it crazy this is an anomaly situation but what hey if it works it works right so we have three-fourths of the afc south in any given sunday and <laughs> <laughs> now we're gonna move into the basement here we got two teams left carolina panthers i mean they bench bryce young how do you ever escape the basement i feel like you damn near need a new tier just for yourself oh, i was gonna say like, i think that we're in the d the potentially no, we're in hell tier we're in hell let's tier. turn this into the premier league tier let's yeah. let's the de- de- derelegations de- de- need to be introduced we're in the hell tier almost i feel like at this point panthers do, fans do we were so sorry the hell tier? I feel yeah like i think i i actually think that there there how needs to I, be a new tier like how do i add a tier add yeah and nfl hell nfl hell is where the panthers are at we you know that that let it be clear oh no hold on i changed the color what was the color before? It was yellow. Yeah, I think NFL hell. Unfortunately, Panthers fans, you are in hell right now. I don't think there's one Panthers fan that would dispute that. You know what, Panthers fans? Just remember, get out, get out there on the uh, city streets. Tepper needs to go. Tepper needs to go. That's that it because it's just not going to change till Tepper leaves. I think we're all on the same page. And let's just leave it at that, Hunter. New York Giants. I feel like they stay in the basement. I don't think they're in hell yet. Well, they're not in hell yet, but I don't think they're moving out of the basement anytime soon. And uh, they, 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 I think it's very likely that they move to hell, to football hell, before that they move up to any given Sunday. So Interesting. Interesting. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been our Power Rankings NFL tiers for week three. If you don't know ball, want to know ball, be sure to subscribe. Leave a like. Let us know in the comments where you would have the Panthers or where you'd have any of these teams that we've missed on. So have a great rest of your night. Thank you so much for watching.